So we are currently in lockdown like everybody else and a couple of people suggested that I make a video on how we make videos, <laughs> what our process is. A lot of people think it's Michael that does our editing but it's actually all me. Um, Michael helps me out in the fact that he has a bit more knowledge than me in terms of a background in kind of camera stuff but he doesn't do any of the editing. He will watch the video before it goes up, but everything else is me. And I'm completely self-taught, so everything that you'll see in this video is not necessarily the right way to do it. It's just the way that I've kind of taught myself to do it and it works for us, so that's how it happens. The way we film our vlogs is we wake up and decide we're gonna do a cruise and then the vlog kind of happens around that. We try and capture whatever happens on the day. So first of all, I thought I'd just talk through the equipment that we use for that. All the real time stuff, we actually just film on our phones. So Michael's got uh, an iPhone 7, I've got an iPhone 6, and they're both like four years old now. So <laughs> they probably need upgrading at some point, but they're still doing the job. The only issue is the sound's not great. So on mine, it really doesn't work. If I try and record anything, it's really clicky, really bad sound. Michael's is better, which is why you'll see more of him doing talking to camera stuff on the move, but we don't do it that often. And that's mainly because of the sound. The bits we record at the beginning and the end, and the kind of talking to camera, we have a voice recorder, which is what I'm using now. I've got the microphone on and it's a, just a, an H4N Pro Zoom voice recorder. We used to use the mics that were built in, but one of them got damaged and we couldn't replace it. Um, I think the newer model, you can just pop them off and replace them. So now we use these kind of plug-in microphones, which are actually better. We've just got one plugged in at the moment. So when I edit the video, I'll put it into both speakers. Um, but when there's two of us, we'll have one each and then you'll get them in hopefully the right ear. Hasn't always been in the right ear. <laughs> and we also record the voice over that we started doing maybe two years ago. We record that on, on here as well. So that's how we do the sound. And then obviously for most of the video, we just put music over the top because we don't have the ambient sound from the iPhones, which is a shame, but we haven't really worked out a way around that other than upgrading our phones or buying a separate camera to record on. But the beauty of the iPhone is we can have one each. So they're just in our back pocket. So whenever we want to pull them out, we can pull them out and film. We're not carrying around a big camera as well as steering the boat and doing locks and dealing with the dog. Uh, it's just convenient for us. And the picture quality is pretty good. The other cameras we use are the GoPros. We've got a GoPro Hero 4 Silver and a GoPro Hero 4 Black. We put the silver on the front and the black at the, on the back and um, we always put them in the same place so that the footage is just easier to manage because we get the rear view on one memory card and the front view on another memory card so it's easier for me to manage it that way and we always record in time lapse and not everyone likes the time lapse but we couldn't physically do it in real time video with the GoPros and have it running all the time couple of reasons for that is we've got six batteries that we rotate for the GoPros. So while one camera's filming, one battery's charging and then one's waiting to go in. Um, so we have to rotate them and we rotate them maybe every two hours when we're, when we're cruising, maybe a bit more often than that. If we were recording in real time instead of time lapse, we'd have to change them every half hour and that's just not possible. And it would also mean that our memory cards would fill up much quicker and we'd have additional uh, problems of storing those files and if I ever occasionally do film in real time on the GoPros, editing it becomes much harder because the computer can't cope with all that data as well. Um, and if you think like sometimes we do a seven or eight hour cruise, it's not feasible for us to have seven or eight hours of footage to trawl through to find like a couple of minutes you know, or a 10 minute vlog or a 20 minute vlog. So that's the reason we do the time lapse. I don't mind the time lapse. I think it helps tell the story. We're traveling at four miles an hour. And if I showed like a 10 second clip, we'd go short distance, but I can show us going through a whole lock with the time lapse. And I, I kind of quite like it as a tool just to tell the story. And I try and limit how much I put into each vlog. I have to use it um, just because we don't always have enough stuff filmed on the handheld cameras because, you know, we're doing other things like working the pedals and uh, steering the boat and talking to people. And it's not always easy to get the camera out and film what we want to do. The GoPro cameras actually go in these cases, which are from GoPro. I think they came with the camera. 
um, GoPro have all these like adjustable mounts that you can put on and we took one of the mounts and Michael actually bought a disc magnet from Amazon and covered it in Sugru and then um, used epoxy to stick it to one of the mounts. So now both of our GoPro cameras are on magnet mounts so that means we can stick them anywhere we want on the boat. Um, to record as we cruise. Reality is we always have them in the same place. Occasionally we move them to get like a side view if we're going across an aqueduct or something. Um, but generally they're facing one forward and one back. I forgot to mention we also use a gorilla pod with a phone attachment when we record the intro and the outro on the front of the boat. And um, we've actually got the one with the magnetic feet so we can just attach it to the to the roof while we record. So I think that's all the equipment that we use for recording. Um, we store all of our data onto uh, a hard drive and we actually keep all of the footage that we shoot and all of the libraries that we create to do the edits. Um, so we've got about a year's worth on here and it's getting full. This is, I don't know how big it is, I think it's four terabytes. But yeah, this is so a year's, a year's worth of logs and four terabytes and yeah, we're going to have to get a new one. So uh, that's all the equipment we use to film the vlogs. So now I'm going to talk about how I actually take the footage, get it onto the hard drive and make a vlog. So I actually do all my editing on my Apple MacBook Pro. Let me work out how to do a screencast. So the first thing I need to do is take all the footage that we've recorded um, from the two phones, the two cameras and the audio recorder and get it onto the hard drive. So I select all the photos and videos and I delete them off our phones after I've imported them because we don't have enough storage on our phones and then I import them into iPhotos on the computer. So that takes a couple of minutes. And then I need to get them onto the hard drive and what we actually do is we create a new folder on the hard drive each day that we cruise. So for example, my um, hard drive is called Houdino. My footage is all stored in the footage folder. Um, and then this is my um, structure for my data management. So for example, I'll go into 2020. So far I've got footage imported from January and March. I'll pick a day in January, like the 7th of January. Um, so this is everything that was shot on that day. And then we've got movies. So the GoPros and the phones. Photos are separated out but I still import them into my library and then we've got the sounds files um, that were recorded on that, that day as well. And this structure is actually created by a little script that Michael wrote for me. So when I actually transfer the images from my photos from my Mac onto the hard drive it automatically populates them and creates these folders so I don't have to keep creating new folder and new folder it just happens automatically because my husband is clever. So as you can see it takes quite a while to import the data so usually I'll film a few vlogs and maybe do this once a week or once every few weeks depending on how often we cruise because it's a really boring task <laughs> even with Michael's script. So when they're all imported, I can go to imports and go to my last import. So this is everything that was imported today, the 3rd of April. And I can highlight them all and then go to my script, which is under services, import to Houdono, which is my hard drive. And then that's importing everything come to my hard drive. And if I go to my hard drive, I'll see more folders created here. So imported 16 JPEGs and 99 movie files. So if we go and look at my hard drive and take a look at the folders, these have all been created since I did that last import. So we've got the top level folder, which is the date structure. So these are all the clips that were filmed on the 20th or 4th of March, which is the third month. 2020 so they're always in order and um, if I go into that folder we've got movie clips only from Michael's phone and there's the three clips that we filmed on that day. So that was a couple of days ago and since then I have imported the rest of the footage so now on the days that we've cruised we've got footage from both of the GoPros uh, the black is the back of the boat and the silver is the camera at the front of the boat um, so there we go. There's Michael on the front of the boat in West Stockwith Basin, which is where we were on the 17th of March. Little spoiler there. And then 
we've got the two phones, a lot more clips, that's my phone, <laughs> and then a few on Michael's phone as well. There's also photos, I tend not to take photos too much, but um, they just get imported as well. And then these are the sound clips, um, so that'll be the intro and the outro. I'm sure why there's four on this day, but there is, <laughs> usually there's only two. So I actually use Final Cut Pro to edit all of our vlogs, so I'll just open that up. And then the first thing I need to do is create a new library. So I'll go to File, New Library. The next vlog is vlog number 270, which is quite a scary number. And I create the name with as much information as possible. So this vlog was actually filmed on the 8th of Feb. Um, and we travelled from Thorn to a place called Kroll. Um, so that's the name of my library. Um, and then, so that's created that here. And then the next thing I need to do is import all of the video clips and the sound clips. So I can just click on this arrow here, which is the shortcut to the import. The files are on Houdano. They're in the 2020 folder in February. On the 8th of February is when we did the cruise. So I can just actually highlight the high level folder um, inside that is the movies, the photos and the sounds. But if I just click on the high, the high level folder and click on import selected, it should import all of the clips within those folders. Um, so there we go. Um, and I usually do a few vlogs at a time, so We'll do another new library for the next vlog. So this one's 271. We travelled two days later on the 10th of Feb. And we travelled from Kroll to Kidby. And then inside this folder I can import all of the footage and sound files from the 10th of February. And I'll just do one more. We're actually in Kidby for a very long time because we were waiting for the tidal trend to go down. Um, so file, new, library, and this one is 272. And believe it or not, we were in Kidby until the 3rd of March. And we travelled from Kidby to West Stockwith. And the libraries are all kept in this um, folder called Current Libraries. Once I've edited the vlog, they get moved out of the current libraries folder. So these are all the, the ones I'm working on at the moment. And then I can import the media from the 3rd of March for that vlog. And then this little uh, little pie chart here shows how much of the footage is still importing, but you can also go and look under Windows and Background Tasks. Uh, it's working through importing all the footage and that'll take a little while. So this video has just been about the equipment we use to record our vlog and how we manage the media. In the next part of this how-to series, which I think is just going to be two videos, I'll talk about the actual editing process itself. So hopefully you found this interesting. As I said, it's not the right way to do it, it's just the way I do it. Um, and yeah, I hope it was entertaining. <laughs>